Wow. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. What an honor, really. What a great crowd tonight. Yeah, it's actually a perfect set for me to tell you that it doesn't matter how long you've been in Denmark, if you've been living here for one year or a decade. The barriers of being a migrant in this country are a reality for everybody. When you're searching for a job, people tell you, hmm, Beatriz, it's not really about what you know, it's about who you know. And then you come to realize that it's going to be hard to find that job because you know very few people and no one knows you. There is a lack of connections for migrant women in this country. And that's exactly what Quinfo has been trying to tackle via the mentor network for the past 16 years. For those of you who are not very familiar with Quinfo, in English, we are the Danish Center for Information and Gender. And that's what we do. We inform the public about what's going on in, in the area of gender studies and gender research, both in Denmark and in the rest of Scandinavia. It, this is us. <laughs> we are based in Copenhagen. We have a sweet spot by the harbor. And we have a staff of 15 full-time employees. These are my, the smiling faces are my colleagues. We are only two working for the Mentor Network. And if you count more than 15 people here, it's because we have included Henrietta, our CEO, and Camila, the head of our board, in the picture. But, you know, an information center for gender? What's the relationship with migrant women? I want to take you back to the year 2000, the year 2001, when the political debate around migrants and their integration in Denmark was really, really intense and very, very negative. Back then, the entire women's movement and Quinfo were being criticized for not doing anything to support migrant women. But what to do? Our director at the time, Elizabeth, took the, the criticism very seriously. But she didn't want to drag Quinfo into this endless blah, blah, blah that was leading nowhere. She wanted action. So she gathered her team around a table and they agree on reaching out and asking migrant women, what do you need? What do you want? What can we do for you? And from this dialogue, a few very interesting things came out. First, the most difficult thing for migrant women living in this country is to find a job that actually matches your education, your profession, your qualification. Most of us are tunneled into working for care, caring for children or for the elderly, or working in the area of service. You know, working for hotels like this one, or for restaurants, or in these huge cleaning companies. So, the women told Elizabeth, we have been searching for jobs. We have sent thousands of applications out there without success. And then they said, well, we know that more than 50% of the jobs in Denmark are filled via personal and professional connections. You know, someone who knows someone who knows someone. But we, have, we don't have any connections. We have our small Danish family. We have some few Danish friends. Uh, we, we meet once in a while our neighbors, and we talk to some of the parents at school. Yeah, in the, in the proper occasions, and that's it. And Alyssa tells me, Beatrice, the moment they said lack of connection, something just clicked in me, because that's exactly what Quinfo has. We're one of the best connected organizations in this country. We're connected to all the women who are part of our expert database. We're connected to all the women who uh, use our online magazine. We're connected to all the women to, who come to our events, especially the big party every 8th of March. And we have some women who sponsor some of our products. So Elizabeth went straight to her desk, pulled out some mailing list, I wrote a personal email to all these contacts. And in her email, she asked, are you willing to meet a migrant woman living in Denmark? 
is yes. Are you willing to support her with whatever she wants to do with her life here? If yes. Are you willing to use some of your connections to open possibilities for her? If yes, write back to me. You won't believe this, but from one day to the other, overnight, Elizabeth got 300 replies of women saying, yes, 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 you can count me in. Ah, is that fantastic? 300 women. I mean, Elizabeth was not expecting that at all. It took her by surprise. But when she looked at the replies, she could see that a lot of those women have lived abroad and have experienced firsthand how does it feel, how difficult it is to make it when you are new in a city, you are not fluent with the language, and you don't know anyone. So that's how we started. 300 potential connections out there. Now I'm ready to tell you what is it that we do. In the Mentor Network, we're very good at facilitating meaningful connections between two women who can be beneficial to one another. And we facilitate the connection because the odds that these two women meet and share out there in the real world are almost zero. One of them is born and raised in Denmark, like Katrina here, and she said, is navigating society and the labor market, you know, this is her place. So we call her mentor. The other one, like Wesley, have just moved here, in this case from Colombia to Copenhagen, and is really trying to find out what to do next. We call her mentee. They work together for a year. We, we train them into using mentoring as a strategy, as a methodology to get to certain goals for a year. During that year, we document the whole experience and we, we have created our own tools so we can guarantee the confidentiality of the data. We monitor the progress and we act as mediators if there is conflict or misunderstanding. Because remember that these two women are totally strangers, yeah? So facilitating the connection is just the first step. At the end of the year, they have the possibility to evaluate each other, and then they evaluate us, and we all learn. Sweet, straightforward. But is this any different from the many, many mentoring programs that you find out there? I think so. At Quinfo, we believe that the integration of ethnic minorities in this country is a process, and it's a process where everybody can participate, everybody can be part of, everybody can contribute to. It's not only for migrants, right? So from that perspective, our approach to mentoring is based on three guiding principles from the women's movement. We focus on the positive, we focus on equality, and we focus on the individual. When I mean positive is a mentee only get a mentor if there is someone who believes in her, if there is someone who sees potential, who sees skills and resources that should not go to waste. Equality, you know, the fact that we match these two women uh, based on similarities similar education, a similar profession, um, similar interest, means that they have a ground to build a relationship based on dialogue, based on exchange, and actually they both change through the year. At the end of the year, they both have changed. And individuality is because for the women in the network, it doesn't matter where the mentee comes from, what she eats, what she wears, what matters is that she has a goal, she has you know, a destination, and we all should support her to get there. So in that sense, MNT doesn't represent all women her nationality, or all women her profession, or all women her age, and it's the same for mentors. They join in as individuals to support another individual. So one mentor doesn't represent all women in Denmark. And on top of that, we have added this element of networking. Very often, 
the right opportunity, the right tip, the right comes from interacting with other mentees in the network and with other mentors and not only the one-to-one, -one, right? Okay, so now, so far, beautiful theory, but how does it work in the real world? The young woman in the middle of this picture is Hannah. Hannah moved to Denver with her family as a refugee when she was two years old. And the family relocated here in, in Almanza, in the neighborhood of Bozmose. Bozmose is to me a very vibrant place. It has around 10,000 residents, and you see they're living together up to 80 different nationalities. But Bozmose is also in this ghetto list because a, a large segment of the residents do not have strong ties with the labor market, and because 70% of them, or a bit more, have a different ethnic background than Danish. Many of them are young people <coughs> and children. So going back to Hannah, Hannah grew up in Polish Mose, and when she was in high school, she went into an exchange uh, program to the US, a trip to the US, and when she came back, she knew exactly what she wanted for her future. Yeah, but Hannah's wishes and expectations were not fully aligned with, aligned with those of her family and friends. You know, the family, out of love, wanted Hannah to study at a local college, probably meet someone, uh, get married, start a family, settle down in those movies. But Hannah wanted much more than that. She wanted a part-time job. She wanted to study cellular biology at university. And she wanted to experience what is it to be a university student abroad, outside Denmark. So Hannah was matched to Mette, who at the time worked as a career advisor for the University of Southern Denmark. And they went through a normal process of mentoring, like the one I mentioned before. If you look at Hannah's LinkedIn profile today, what do you see? You see that in a very short period of time, Hannah found that part-time job as a care assistant in a nursery home for elderly people. Hannah got her bachelor degree from cellular biology from a university in the UK. Hannah has been an exchange student with the University of Tokyo and the University of Singapore. Hannah got her master's degree from the University of Copenhagen. And Hannah is now part of this cool, super prestigious graduate program with this huge company where she was picked among thousands of applicants. And Hannah is now a mentor in our program in Copenhagen. Yeah. I have to tell you this. I, I felt I was so privileged when I, I felt privileged when I met Hannah. And, and actually, we had this little conversation over coffee about what, you know, how's the mentorship? What happened? And she said to me, well, Beatrice, Mette, listen to me. She was not my family. She was not my friend. And she listened to me. I asked her, is this possible? Is that possible? And she said, of course. Yeah, sure, it is. And when she was in doubt, she would say, mm, well, I don't really know, but let's find out together what the possibilities are. So Hannah said to me, you know, it's, if a total stranger, if, uh, yeah, if a total stranger was there, standing by me, listening to me, I just knew I had to work harder. So, I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, ah, oh, it is great, but this is just one good story, right? I joined the Mentor Network in 2008, and I've been documenting good stories since then. 
Margaret stories in Wolfsmose, in Copenhagen, in Aarhus, good stories in Espia, in Albo. You know, mentees who wanted to go into politics and we've been there for them. Mentees who wanted to become entrepreneurs and we were there for them. Mentors and mentees who have gone to international conference and talked to European leaders about their mentorship about Denmark. Mentors and mentees who have been friends forever. And so many former mentees like Antonietta here, who are now active, happy, engaged mentors. That's impact. That's really impact. You know, if you look at our results, they've been consistently positive through the years. And this is from last year, from 2017, and you can see that mentees are getting into jobs or getting into new education or getting fluent at using Danish. But a lot of them had actually regained the necessary self-confidence to get you know, to get whatever, to get right whatever comes their way. And what are the mentors saying? The mentors are saying that they are better at problem solving, that they are better at building empathy, that they are better at listening, that actually they have become very, very good at peeling off the stereotype that says that we all, you know, all migrant women are a burden for Danish society. The mentor network is one option. It's a good option, but it doesn't work for everybody, right? It's not one size fits all. All I can tell you is that when it works, it goes very fast and it can be so powerful. We started with a small, humble pilot project in 2002. And up to this day, we have had more than 8,000 women joining the network. At some point, we had 133 nationalities represented in it. And I have had the pleasure to co-create similar programs in three, no, 30 countries around the world. 30, ah, that is straight. Yeah. But I have to tell you that not all is good. We lost the office in Bolus in 2015 because of lack of funding. And now the office in Copenhagen is in danger because of the same. We have managed to, to create little pockets of, of collaboration and little pockets of funding, but it's not enough. So, yeah. If you cut the connections, you cut the possibilities. So I'm here to tell you that please realize the power of your connections and remember, it doesn't matter if you have been living in Denmark for one year or a decade. The barriers of being a migrant in this country are a reality for everybody. Thank you.